Today we're going to be learning about how to create an e-greeting card. This is my example using very simple shapes and I'm going to show you how to make this one. Go ahead and open up Vector and click on New File. At the top on the left hand side you'll see Pages. These work very similarly to Illustrator's artboards. We're going to go down to the bottom. We're going to click on this little paper clip link here to remove that. That's what forces the workspace to stay as a square and we want a rectangle. Change it to 600 by 400 pixels. That's going to change your workspace up here. You'll see a little outline. This outline is the space that you're going to be working in. Now, anything outside of that outline will not appear in your final project. But for right now, we're going to create a background because if we don't, it's going to stay transparent. Go ahead and click on the rectangle tool and you're going to click and drag it across the screen. Go over the edges here. You want to be able to see where it becomes a little bit see-through that tell you, tells you where the edges of your workspace are. If you click on background, there's a little square there that has a color. You can go in and choose a color in there and that's going to create your background color. Now because I'm creating an owl, I want to start by creating the eyes. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the circle tool and I'm going to create a perfect circle by holding down the shift key as I drag my mouse across. This is going to create the first eye. I'm going to go ahead and change that color to a color that I want. I can always change this later. Now background is what we used to call fill in Illustrator and border is what we used to call stroke. So we're going to go ahead and change the border now. I'm changing the size of it but right now it's the same color as that background so I'm going to switch it to white so I can see it and then I'm going to put it back to the same color as my card's background and I'm going to do that using the eyedropper tool and clicking on that background rectangle. Okay, so now I have the outline of my eye. I want to make the white of the interior of my eye. So I'm going to make another circle. I'm going to change that to white. I'm going to make a couple adjustments to size. And then we're going to create a pupil. Remember that you can zoom in or out on your artboard by using Control plus to zoom in and Control minus to zoom out. Now I have the pupil the way I want it to. I'm going to click and move my background rectangle out of my space because if I try to click and drag, it's just going to move that background. And I want to be able to select all of these pieces without having to click on them individually. So I'm going to click and drag and select all of this eyeball. When you have it all selected, you can right click and choose duplicate. Notice at the top here when you have something selected, you see a bunch of different options. You're going to click on the flip horizontal. That's going to create a mirrored object. Now we're going to go over and we're going to create the beak. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a circle more of an oblong. I'm not holding down the shift key because I don't want it to be a perfect circle. Okay, so I'm just going to make a few adjustments, move some eyes around, make it a little bit larger on that nose. And I also want to make sure that it's going to match the same color as the outside outline. So I'm going to change that color using the eyedropper tool to make sure that it's the same color. Okay, so now we're going to use the pen tool. This is a little bit different than how we used it in Illustrator, but we're going to go ahead and click on that and we're going to create an anchor point at the bottom of this beak. Now click on that once to create your anchor point and then double click to be able to turn that into a point. Once you've double clicked and turned it into a point, you can just click on it and adjust it as you need. So again, I'm just making some minor adjustments. You'll notice that Vector actually creates these little blue lines. Those are helping you to be able to see where your objects are in comparison to other objects so that you can line them up. 
I realize my pupils are a different color, so I use that eyedropper tool again to change that to match both the beak and the outline. Now we're going to start creating the wing of this owl. Again, we're just using a simple circle tool, and then we're going to use the pen tool to create a point by clicking once where we want to create that point and double clicking to create the actual point. Now I'm adjusting the size of this wing and I'm lining it up roughly where I think I might want it to be so that I can see how it's going to look. Now I want to have a little bit of that wing missing so I'm going to create another circle because I want that circle to subtract from the overall piece. So I'm going to click on the outside of my object and I'm going to drag my mouse across to select both parts. Now because they were the same color it's hard to see where it's lined up so I'm going to change that color. I'm going to line it up again in a different way. Now I can actually see where it will subtract and then again I'm going to select both objects by clicking on the outside and dragging across. You'll remember in Illustrator we had the ability to do many of these similar things from exclude to intersect to subtract and unite and add. In this case we want to subtract. So we're going to click on that and then we're going to line this up again. So I'm going to add a border on here and it's going to create the same color border as the last border that I created and I'm just going to kind of move this around. If I go over into the corner of my object and I click, I can actually drag and rotate my object and if I hold down shift I can rotate it in 15 degrees. Once I have it the way I want it to, I'm going to go ahead and right click, click duplicate and then I'm going to flip it horizontally. From here we're just going to make some adjustments. I'm going to click and drag over different parts that I want to make larger. If I want to keep them proportionately larger I'm going to hold down the shift key while I'm dragging. If I don't want to keep it proportional I just go ahead and move it. And now we're going to go ahead and create the body of this owl. So we're going to move off to the side. We're going to create another circle use our pen tool to create another point at the bottom of our owl body here. And we're just going to click once to create that anchor point and then double click to create the body point. Now we want to actually have this be a see-through body so we're going to change the opacity level all the way to zero so it's completely gone and then we're going to click on the border. Now we want the border to actually be the same color as the body so we're going to go ahead and use that eyedropper tool and make that change. Now. I want to actually hide most of this body, so we're going to create a square to sit on top of it, select both parts, and we're going to subtract just like we did before. Now, because we want this part of it to be a slightly different color, we want it to match the background so it too disappears, we're going to create another square on the outside, and we're going to change that color to be the color of the outline, which also happens to be the color of our e-card's background. Now I can't use any of these tools up here, the exclude, subtract, intersect, none of those, because they'll combine it and then they'll change it so that it's the same color. We don't want that. So we're going to go ahead and just leave it as is and group it together instead. So now we're going to go ahead and move it over so that it's underneath the owl, but you'll notice the little green bar we just created is on top. So I'm clicking a little down arrow button that's moving the layer down so that it goes behind. Remember, uh, Illustrator had a send to back or send behind option. That's what this is. So now I have that lined up roughly the way I want it to be and where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pen tool by itself to create a simple shape. We're just creating a triangle for that ear. I'm going to fill that color in and I'm going to remove the border color and then I can make my adjustments to it. Remember if I don't want it to stay the same proportionate size I don't have to hold down shift. I'm going to move that around and then I'm going to use that down arrow again to hide it behind the shape that's already there. So I may have to click on that a whole bunch of times since this is one of the first objects we created. 
Once I have it the way I like it, I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate that once again and I'm going to use the flip horizontal tool to make it so that it's the exact same on the opposite side. Now, rather than just hitting that down button a whole bunch of times, I'm actually going to show you over here you have a layers panel. And on this layers panel you can actually click and drag the layer that you're on and bring it down to the bottom manually. You'll notice too when I brought the background down just a moment ago, you could see you couldn't see part of the owl. His ears were missing. So I just moved that layer down to the bottom, the background layer, and now we can see all the parts. So now we're just making little minor adjustments and we're going to change just a few things before we move on. Now we're going to go ahead and create the forehead. Just create a circle. We're going to move that circle to where we want it to and then we're going to put it behind the owl. You can either do this clicking on that down arrow or by moving the layer to the bottom. Remember that you want to avoid putting it on the actual bottom because that's your background layer. Okay, so now we're going to create the feet. To create the feet, we're going to create a half circle. So we're going to create a circle and then a square and then use that square to overlap the circle and subtract. And then I'm going to use the pen tool to create the talons or the claws of an owl. And we're just going to create those points and then connect those points together Fill in the background with the same color as the main color that you want. And then we're going to unite those two together. So we're going to click on the outside, drag over both objects. Once we've lined them up the way we want them to. And then we're going to use the unite button. Once we've done that, we can move it to where we want it to and adjust its size. Right click, duplicate, and move it over. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and create the tree branch that the owl is going to be sitting on. So we're just going to use our square tool and we're going to create a long branch. Now we can move this branch on the layers panel and put it down a few steps and know that it'll be underneath the feet. But in order for us to really see that it's under there, we have to change the color. So we're just going to change the color real quick. We can see that the feet are now on top. We don't need to move it down any further, so that's good. But I want to change this and make it... Uh, a linear gradient and linear gradient allows for it to be two different colors where it changes from one color to another. So in this case we're going to make it kind of a reddish brown on the top and allow it to stay black on the bottom. Now that we have everything the way we want it to we're going to select all of the objects by clicking on the outside and dragging all the way across and grouping these parts together so that we can move them as one without having to worry about clicking on everything. So we've moved the background back down so that we can see how it looks on the background and there's a few things I still want to change. So I moved the background off and I've ungrouped the entire object I'm making my adjustments and once I finish making those adjustments I'm going to select all again group it together and bring that background back down. You may go through this a couple of times because you'll notice once you bring the background down that there's a few things you still want to change. For instance, I want to get rid of the borders and change my wings a little bit. So we're going to play around with this for a couple of seconds here. Okay, I think that's about what I want. So we're going to group it together. We're going to bring the background back down. And now we're going to change the size of the owl and place him where we want him to be. Remember, if you want to keep everything proportionate, you're going to hold down shift while you're dragging from the corners. Always drag from the corners if you want to keep it proportionate while holding shift. 
Okay, I think I like where he's at now. So we're gonna go ahead and use the text tool to create our message. Remember, it's guess who misses you. So we're gonna type that in and then we'll make adjustments to the text. Clicking off of the text and then clicking onto it, we now have the options for changing the size, for changing the font style, And when we change the font style, it shows you a sample of what it might look like, but you really can't tell until you've actually clicked it onto your text that's there. Oh no, that's not going to work. Okay, I think I like this one. I'm going to go ahead and change the size. I'm going to make it a bit larger. And I like that it's the same color as my owl, so I'm not going to change any of the color there. I still don't quite like this owl. I'm just going to change the nose a little bit. Remember, zoom in and out using Control Plus or Control Minus to zoom out. Yeah, that's better. So now we're going to add the text at the bottom. And this text, I want it to be in the same font, same color, but I'm going to have it be a bit smaller. So the bottom text here says, hint, it's me, I miss you. And I'm going to go ahead and make those adjustments here. We're going to change the font style to match uh, remember that this one was called uh, Loved by the King. So we're going to go ahead and put it to that one. And then we're going to adjust it. So now over here in this text panel, you actually have the option to do more than just change your font size, color, shape. There's all sorts of things that you can do in here. Uh, but right now we're just going to adjust it. Also, Vector has these guidelines that turn on. That's those little blue lines. So if you get close to something and click and drag away from it, it will actually show you that line as you move. Okay, so now it's time to save and rename your greeting cards. So you're going to come up here where it says Untitled, and you're going to type in the title of the assignment, which is eCard underscore your period number, underscore the person you would send this to, underscore your name, underscore V1. This is your first version. Now, we're not putting a client code in here. Instead, we're putting in who we would be sending this to. In my case, I'd be sending this to Miss Stanfield, so that's why I put in Stanfield underscore Umberger. Okay, let's go ahead and export. So to export, we only have one page, so you don't have to worry about changing that. But you're going to click on SVG. Make sure that that's at SVG for your first download. Go ahead and go down to the download button and click on that. If for some reason your download does not automatically start or you're having trouble finding that download, you can actually click on the copy button right next to where it says URL and paste that into a comment on your assignment. If you do that, that allows me to actually see your project. Now, if you want me to send this to somebody, you're going to need to change SVG to JPG. Download that and send both the SVG and the JPG to me, and then tell me who you want it to go to, or send it to them yourself. Just let me know. Okay, so that was creating a greeting card in Vector. You've now created your first project in Vector. Congratulations. Go to Google Classroom and turn it in.